I said I was gonna do it. Let's see if we can. Hi! Thanks for joining me. Oh. Cheers. So, I thought I would do a Q&A. So sometimes I do Q&As on my Instagram or Twitter account and I just kind of type the responses. But I sometimes find that quite boring and I thought this might be a bit more fun to do a little video. So I asked people to send me some questions about pop music, about my channel, anything else, um, and I would answer the questions on a video, which is what I'm doing now. And I uh, was thinking it might be more fun if I've had a glass of wine or two. I've had one already. This is my second, but I'm not drunk, so it should be fine. Oh. So, I thought I might get a couple of questions. I didn't know how many I would get, but I actually got quite a few, so I wrote them all out and put them in this little thing, just because, first of all, I didn't want to be staring at my phone the whole time. And also, I thought I could mix them up a bit more then, and I wouldn't know which question I was going to pick up and, and when. So, let's just get straight into it. I've kind of thought about some of these answers already, and some of them I haven't really thought about at all, so we'll kind of see how we get on. First question. I have also written down who sent the questions in, but I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce the names right. So, this is a question from Uche Uncorked. I think that's how you pronounce it. The question is, rank the following albums. This is a Kylie Minogue question. Light Cheers, Body Language, X, Aphrodite, Kiss Me Once, Golden. Rank the following albums. So, I would definitely say Kiss Me Once is at the bottom. It's not really one that I, I enjoy. I like some of the songs. I don't overall think it's a great Kylie Minogue album, so that would definitely be at the bottom. Slightly above that then, I would say... Hmm. Ooh. I'm going to say Aphrodite. Like, I really like Aphrodite, but I think some of the production on that's quite headache inducing on some of those songs and yeah I do like Aphrodite but um, I'm gonna put that just just above Kiss Me Once and then just above that I'm gonna put Golden because I really like the lyrical content on Golden a lot more and I know some people don't like the sort of country influences on that record but I don't have an issue with it and as I said lyrically I think it was nice to have her back really kind of in in the zone of writing the songs and getting involved in the songwriting. Above that then I'm gonna put... I'm gonna put Body Language. Again, another great album. Love the R&B vibes, the sort of electro 80s vibe. I don't love every song. There's a song called I Feel For You which I don't really like, and I've never been a fan of After Dark either, so those two can go and I'd replace those with B-sides and stuff, but overall I like Body Language. Above that, so I've got Light Years and X left. So I think Light... Mm, I really like X, I know it's quite messy, but the whole era and all of the extra songs that leaked, I just like it as a, as a whole thing, but... I think the, yeah, I put X next above Body Language, but I think Light Years, out of all of those, is probably the most cohesive album. It's got that kind of 60s vibe running throughout, really good pop music, great album cover, great return to form after kind of Impossible Princess and, and that whole, whole thing. So yeah, I would say Light Years is definitely above that. So there you go. Oh, that's done. That's one. <laughs> I try not to take this long to answer everything. Next question is from Eric. I think Bionic would die for a good video as that era was... Oh, I can't even read my handwriting. As that era was full of highs and lows. I agree. 
Um, I actually, when I'm thinking about ideas of what I'm going to do for videos, I put it on my phone, like on my notes section of my phone. I'm pretty sure I've got body language on there to do at some point. Body language. Bionic? Oh no, the wine. I think I've got Bionic on the phone to do at some point because I'm a really big fan of Bionic as well and it is underrated. It's a great record. Um, highs and lows, yeah, I think it's a shame that that didn't go further because I think there was a lot of potential with that record and it would have been great to have seen that uh, being toured as well. Thanks Eric. Next question. This is from Fearless Buchanan, hello. So uh, they write, well the question is, loved the VB unreleased albums video, thank you very much. Do you think you'll ever cover any more unreleased projects? Uh, completely open to doing another video about another unreleased album. I don't know w which one I would do. I know there's quite a lot of unreleased albums or leaked material from album eras and all that kind of thing. So yeah, I'd be up for it. Again, I nothing comes t to mind, but if there's any suggestions, then then let me know. And if anybody wants to jump on a call <laughs> and discuss it with me, then why not? Thank you. Another sip of wine. Mm. Okay. This question comes from Flemish Giant, who uh, comes from my Patreon. So thank you. Question is, um, okay, question is regarding Sophie Ellis Baxter. Would releasing If You Go have salvaged Sophie Ellis Baxter's Trip the Light Fantastic campaign or simply given her another top 64 smash? <laughs> yeah, so I, I love If You Go from that album. It was one of my favourites, if not my favourite actually from that. And I know she worked with Xenomania. Now, I heard that she didn't actually enjoy the process of working with Xenomania because they're quite well known for, you know, taking lyrics from multiple songs and, and merging them and using different music genres and putting them all into one. And so I don't know how that would have gone with, with the way that Sophie writes, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that I heard that her and Kylie both struggled a little bit with the way that Xenomania work and write and produce. And I heard that she had quite a bad experience recording If You Go, so I wonder if that's why she didn't want to release it as a single. Not quite sure. But um, would it have salvaged the campaign? I don't know that it was a bad campaign that needed to be salvaged, really. I guess it could have done better, but I don't know that If You Go would have salvaged it necessarily, but I hope that it would have been a big hit because it's a good song. But I don't know. But it's a great song, so that's my answer. This is also from Flemish Giant. Um, <laughs> I think Flemish asked quite a few questions actually. Uh, this question is, what are the worst solo singles by all the solo Spice Girls? It's quite a loaded question. The worst solo singles. Okay. Um, well, I'm thinking the first thing that comes to mind for Mel C is I Want Candy. That's just never been a song that I've liked. I've not particularly loved her version of it, didn't really like the music video, it all came across a bit desperate in a way, like not from Mel C but like from the record label to try and like get a hit or something like that and I know I think it was used for a film and things like that so that's that's okay but I don't think it really needed to be added on to the This Time album and yeah it's just not a great song that I really like from her and I wouldn't seek it out or listen to it. I'd say from Jerry uh, I was going to say Half of Me, but actually I, I quite like the chorus of Half of Me. So I'd probably say the last song that she released, which was the George Michael tribute, which was uh, Angels in Chains. So that'd probably be my least favourite, just because I don't think that vocally, I think that, that wasn't great for her. Didn't really do a lot for me, that one. Um... Mel, uh, Melanie B or Mel B, I would probably use, say Lullaby is my least favourite from her. It wasn't an awful song, but I would have, I think from that album she should have released Hotter as the next single and not Lullaby. Who else? Uh, Victoria. See, Victoria hasn't really had any bad singles, that's 
I suppose that's the one thing that she can she can say. Um, possibly a mind of its own is probably my my least favorite out of the ones that she's released, but it's not a bad single, and I still quite like it. And I would say for Emma, um, oh well, she released um, is it my happy place, and she released that that cover version with her husband Jade. Um, you're all I need to get by, is that what it was? I wasn't a fan. I quite liked what she did on that album with the two original songs and I really liked her reworking of Don't Call Me Baby. And I think they should have released that as a single because that was really an interesting way to approach that song. Whereas that that song she did with Jade was just a, like a karaoke cover. They didn't do anything original with it. So it was really not my thing. Ugh. Okay. I'm trying to get through these quicker because I've got quite a lot. This is from AJM underscore 0719. It's a catchy name. Question is, if you could bring back any girl group for a special album, which one would you choose? Um, so I did think about this before and my initial thought was the 411 because they only had one album out. They had some really good singles and then they got dropped and then they never really came back. But they have recently in the past year or so, they have regrouped and they have done Mighty Hoopla and they've gone on like the 90s pop tours and stuff like that. And I think they're still touring now. So they've kind of already come back, but it would be really great to have a, an actual album from them. I always thought of them as like, a real successor to All Saints because All Saints kind of finished and then they kind of came about a couple of years later I think it was and they definitely had that All Saints vibe about them which really made me happy at the time because I was really upset when All Saints uh, split. So yeah I'd really love another album from them uh, and if not them I'd probably say Atomic Kitten. I think they're due another album surely. Okay next. I hope you're drinking wine as well, because I don't want to be drinking wine solo, because that's just a bit sad. So this is from JP Carr 85 who asks, Was Confessions on a Dance Floor the last good Madonna album? JP Carr 85 no. Because I, personally, am a hard candy fan. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. Um, so I think Hard Candy was actually a really good Madonna album. I get that it was not the typical Madonna record where she is introducing her audience to a new up-and-coming producer or she's trying out a sound that's maybe been a bit underground and she's bringing it to the mainstream. Hard Candy was definitely just a straight-up pop R&B record but it was a really good pop R&B record and I don't think she gets enough credit for that. I do think Rebel Hearts got some good songs on it as well, um, but, I, but I think Madame X wasn't as great for me personally and I don't think a lot of MDM, MDNA. So was Confessions on a Dance for her last good album? Not for me, I think Hard Candy would probably be the last really good album from her. But um, Confessions on the Dance Floor is absolutely brilliant. I agree. This is from Michael85, who asks, What do you think the Spice Girls' third album would have been like if Jerry had stayed? I think, I think similar to a lot of fans, that it probably would have been very similar to Schizophonic. <laughs> um, obviously, Jerry worked with the same writers and producers as had worked on Spice and Spice World, I think it was Absolute. I don't know if they were still, I think they changed their name at some point, but they were called Absolute at the time. Uh, and I think songs like Bag It Up, especially, would have been, you know, uh, definitely like a Spice Girls track. It's very similar to something like Who Do You Think You Are? I can see Spice Girls doing more of the Latin types of things that they did with Viva Forever, so I could have seen them doing something like Machico Latino. So, yeah, I think it probably would have sounded a bit like that, but <laughs> but maybe um, with some other influences from some of the other solo Spice Girls, so maybe some of the more dancey stuff that Mel C was doing, or maybe some tracks would have had a bit more of an R&B feel, like what Mel B and Emma and 
Victoria were doing, but I think it probably would have been very close to, to schizophonic. Obviously, Jerry had a lot of involvement in the writing of the Spice Girls albums as well, so definitely I think it would have been a similar type of sound. I never drink more than one glass of wine. Okay, so this, oh no, I've read that one. This one is from, ooh, okay. I think this is Dande Thamals, Dan, hang on, Dande Themen 17. Sorry, I've butchered that name. Um, top five favorite Liberty X songs. <gasps> Okay, um, I don't know if I can rank these in, in an order, but top five, um, I actually really like Holding On, Holding On, Holding On, <laughs> Holding On For You, Holding On To You, Holding On For You, I think it is, <laughs> oh, skip the wine, so that would be, that would be in my top five, um, Got to have your love. I really like their cover of "Got to Have Your Love." The original is pretty cool as well. If you if you haven't ever heard it, but I like their version of it. Obviously, just a little. So that's going to be in there. Um, uh, mind blank. I do like doing it. Would that be in my top five though? I like being nobody as well, actually, because that's that was really cool. I don't know if that's five. I'm gonna go with those ones. I'm pretty sure that's five. Testing me now, and I'm not. I'm not with it. Um, this is from Bop Flop Twenty. The question is: How long would it take to complete a full video? Thank you for asking. Yeah. So. Um, if you are familiar with my channel, when I first started out, I was doing really long, full discography videos. So I did one, for example, I did one for Danny Minogue, I did one for Louise, I did ones for like Billy Piper and Bewitched, I did one for the Cardigans, and they were getting longer and longer and longer. And I think the Danny Minogue one was possibly the longest at like three and a half hours. So that took a long time because you, you have to start off by writing the whole thing down first of all, then you're piecing it all together following what you've written, then you're editing it down, and then what I have to do, or what I tend to do, is I re-watch it through multiple times to make sure that there aren't any, er any errors or anything that I've forgotten. So when I was trying to do the Danny Minogue one, for example, I was having to re-watch that like three or four times and it was just taking forever. So those ones, we're taking on average about three or four weeks, so the best part of a month. And I work full time, so I'm doing it in the evenings and I'm doing it at weekends. Nowadays, I'm trying to do more like uh, episodic type things, so I'm just doing like a half an hour, 45 minutes video on a particular album in someone's discography and then moving along, like what I did with Sugar Babes and what I'm starting to do now with Girls Aloud. So those ones are taking less time, about a week I would say. So I start it usually on a weekend, spend a couple of hours on a Saturday, a couple of hours on a Sunday, and then I normally dedicate about an hour every evening during the week to try and focus on it, and then I normally finish it up the following weekend. So roughly something like, I don't know, 15 hours or something like that of, of sitting there and actually working on it. So it still takes quite a long time, which is why I really appreciate the people that are on my Patreon currently and also the people that have gone to the Buy Me A Coffee website and donated and purchased a coffee for me because going to a coffee shop is really helpful when I'm just sat there for hours doing editing and as you guys probably know because of all the content that I use in terms of the interviews and the music videos I can't actually monetize the majority of these videos so I don't get anything from it. So it's lovely obviously seeing all of the views and having all of the comments and that's really great and I really appreciate it. And I love interacting with people in the comments section, but it's a lot of my time. And so it's nice when people donate a little bit of money to kind of go towards 
what I'm doing. It sort of helps to grow my channel and it helps to sort of keep me wanting to still do it really, knowing that there are people out there that are supporting me. So it's really, it's really lovely. So big shout out ooh, to everybody <laughs> oh, that um, is either on my Patreon currently or has purchased a coffee for me in the past. I really do appreciate it. Oh, still so many questions. I really need to hurry up. Okay. The next question comes from Jack Daw Griffin, who has just put Robbie or Melcy. Not sure why we're, why we're comparing Robbie to Melcy or Melcy to Robbie, but if I had to choose one, I would say Melcy, just because I think I definitely enjoy her music more. But I do quite like Robbie actually probably more in the early days than I do his recent stuff and I've never really been a fan of his more uh, swing type albums or the orchestral greatest hits that he did or anything like that but um, he's got some really good music within his overall discography and I've got a couple of his live DVDs over there somewhere but Mousy, uh always Mousy. Uh, JS Wild Goose asks, what's been your top three favourite pop concerts? Ooh. So I've been really fortunate in the last, I don't know, 10, 10 years or so to see some so many concerts actually. Top three. So my very first concert that I ever saw was Christina Aguilera's Stripped Tour, which I think was in 2003, I think. That was amazing. It was my first tour. It was my first experience of that whole being, you know, being around people that love music and and seeing Christina. And I, I, I remember going home and my ears were ringing because of how la loud her voice was. And they were ringing for like days afterwards. It was quite strange. I thought I had tinnitus and it wasn't ever going to go away. So definitely Christina. I would also say J-Lo, so we, me and my friend got to see Jennifer Lopez at the O2, I think it was, around 2012, I think it was promoting her, I'm not sure it was promoting anything, I think it was after she'd released, excuse me, a Greatest Hits, I think, but anyway, it was just, yeah, it was around about that time. But she was great and I just remember being so hot and sweaty because I did nothing but dance. She sang a couple of ballads but mostly it was up tempos and I literally danced to every song and I was dripping sweat. It was quite disgusting but that's when you know I think that you've had a really good, a really good concert. Um, third one, I'm trying to think of who I've seen. See I've got my complete mind blank now, I know I've seen loads of people and I can't remember who I've seen. I'm trying to look at my music DVD collection as some kind of reminder um, to who I've seen and I can't remember. Um, you know what, I'll say Alanis Morissette. Got to see Alanis Morissette, that was pretty good. Oh you know what, no, no that was good, but the Cardigans, I know my channel is all about pop music and a lot of people love pop music but I love guitar music and rock music and alternative music as well and the Cardigans were one of my favourite bands and I went to see them, I went to see them on my own so I was a little bit like you know conscious about being on my own but I was adamant I was going to go and it was when they performed their Gran Turismo album in its entirety I think it was for the 20th anniversary so it would have been 2018 um, and they played the yeah the whole album from start to finish and then at the end they did like a greatest hits medley of like another five or six songs at the end. It was just amazing. Definitely one of my favourites. I can't believe I forgot that. But I'll also say Alanis Morissette was great as well. Okay. Speed up, speed up. There's still loads of questions, which I really appreciate by the way. Thank you for, thank you for giving me these questions. This is just from S the letter S. The question is, would you ever do a video on Nadia O? I'm afraid I don't know who that is. So, feel free to send me some links and I'll, and I'll check Nadia O out 
but yeah, I don't know who I don't know who they are. Sorry. 